Okay, welcome everybody in Zoom and live here uh, to our uh, okay. talk. Okay, mathematical uh, physics seminar, physical mathematics seminar. We're very happy today to have Hossein uh, Mofasati from IMPA, who will tell us about modular and automorphic forms and beyond. Okay, thank you, Johannes. First of all, I am mathematicians. The whole my training was mathematics. It's, it was a great luck to know Murad uh, Johannes to to learn. Uh, mathematics coming from physics. So, uh, uh, well, I'm uh, going to talk about uh, a kind of, uh, not really a theorem, a kind of language. Uh, this is a kind of uh, new language. Uh, this language is about what? In uh, mathematics, we have a lot of modular forms. We have many theories, uh, modular forms. There are, for example, elliptic ones. A Siegel, a Hilbert, Hilbert modular forms, and, and more. Uh, there are a lot of theta series, uh, and uh, so maybe. And then uh, after the works in uh, string theory, we have uh, Yukawa couplings, and then uh, topological string partition functions, and so on. So there are a lot of, uh, these are explicit holomorphic functions. So the basic idea, there is a language which uh, uh, you can develop for all these, and you can go even uh, beyond these classical uh, cases and get uh, new types of uh, modular forms. And, uh, <clears throat> and this language had to do with a kind of mo a moduli space, T, that I will try to describe. And it's a language which must be developed, but if you want uh, uh, in mathematics that I give you immediate applications, I think the, the, the first immediate application is that the differential equations of these objects are really studied in mathematics. And so you will buy, uh, uh, for free, you will get uh, differential equations of, uh, of, uh, of all these, uh, these objects. So this, this application will be inside the mathematics itself. And uh, so the idea is that modular forms in number theory, they have been uh, very useful. For example, the Fermat loss theorem has to do with the existence of certain eigenform and so on. So at some point, uh, uh, you feel that you have to do this generalization just for the sake of uh, uh, completeness. Okay, so let's go uh, after this introduction. So let me talk about the basics of this, uh, this, this language. So, First, the language is algebra geometric, so you will start moduli space. And uh, if you, in, in a few minutes, I will talk about examples, it will be clear. But at the end, you will start with the moduli space of uh, certain projective uh, varieties. So this will be Ismos projective variety. Elliptic curves, Calabio threefold, Calabio n-fold will be examples, but at the end, of the language you can uh, develop in this, uh, 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 this generality. And, uh, well, when I am talking moduli space, this means that I am interested in the deformation of x, all possible deformation, complex structure deformation, x, and so on. If I want uh, to this, 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 this thing right exactly, at the end it will be a Hilbert scheme, certain history divided by some algebraic group. But uh, I want to keep this, this, this let's say, this uh, physics uh, treatment of moduli spaces, uh, not really going to too much algebraic geometry. And, and, uh, and basically, uh, what, uh, what uh, uh, the intuition uh, uh, that I need from this moduli space is that at the end, when two projective variety from this moduli space you take, there will be no topological difference. So this means that x1 as a C infinity manifold will be the same as 
x2. And, and uh, let me see. Uh, okay, uh, this one, but not analytically or algebraically in the frame. This means that this x1, x2 as holomorphic uh, complex manifold, they will be different. And, and, uh, and the second one that uh, all possible uh, deformations actually with the fixed polarization uh, coming from the projective space, but let's write in this ambiguous format of X is inside M. Okay, for example, modular space of elliptic curve. So uh, any elliptic curve is uh, tori, and at the end, uh, this modular space will be the P1 minus infinity, so this one dimension. But in a minute, I will. Uh, uh. Okay, so, so the language that I want to, to a little bit explain uh, actually. Uh, uh, I, will, uh, I will work our varieties, x over a field, not necessarily complex numbers, but uh, in many instances I will assume that characteristic of uh, k equal uh, to, to zero. So uh, for this language at the beginning you don't need uh, to, uh, to work over complex numbers. Okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, start. So, uh, well, in mathematics, let's say 100 years ago, they wanted to understand the, the manifolds and they invented the cohomologies. In particular, so I want to know all these linear structures that I know from, uh, uh, I can get from these complex manifolds. One of them is, okay, so what is this? So if, it is, if you know, uh, classical Dirham cohomology. This is actually classical Dirham cohomology. Uh, but after the works of, uh, of uh, Delin, uh, let's say Grothendieck, and plus Delin, actually the contribution of Delin will come in the Hodge filtration, was that uh, you don't need uh, for to define the Dirham cohomology of a projective variety of a field, you don't need really C infinity form like Dirham. You can define it by polynomial objects uh, defined over the field. Uh, so this is, uh, let's say, it was an important observation uh, by Grothendieck after the works of Atia and Hutch. So anyway, uh, the Dirham cohomologies are you now k-vector space. Okay, so let's, let's review what any other structure that we have. So we have the cup product. So HM2 going to HM, so everything is uh, the RAM. M1, alpha, omega, alpha, cup, omega. In the C-infinity context, uh, the original one was uh, this wedge product of differential form, but uh, when you do algebraically or our, uh, of, for uh, check homologies, usually you use a cup, but uh, uh, basically they are, they are the same. So you know uh, uh, this structure on this, uh, this uh, cohomology. What else, uh, what else you have? You have a Hodge filtration. So each cohomology comes with a filtration. Fm and then Fm plus one equal to zero. So maybe, uh, uh, well, uh, if uh, you put uh, k equal to c complex numbers, 
Then this, as I said, this is the classical uh, Deram homology, uh, homology, and the Hodge uh, proved uh, this Hodge decomposition. H zero M. But he proved the Hodge decomposition by harmonic form. But harmonic forms you need uh, uh, C infinity functions. So something. Uh, Maybe the observation of uh, Deline that, okay, our arbitrary field, you cannot uh, define Hodge decomposition. This is uh, something that you cannot construct Hodge decomposition by means of polynomials of our field. But if you define the Hodge filtration, what is the Hodge filtration? This piece is Fm. These two pieces is Fm minus 1, and so on. If you put these pieces uh, together, you will get a filtration. And actually, the filtration itself will be defined over, uh, over, you can define it over field. So this means that at the end, this, these will be k vector spaces. And the main reason for Grothendieck Delin was that they wanted to take everything to this big machinery of algebraic geometry, our arbitrary field, maybe our uh, schemes, and so on. So, uh, it is desirable to avoid C infinity, uh, C infinity and analysis, no? For example, for harmonic form, you have to do a lot of analysis. The analysis, Grothendieck uh, uh, and Delin, they don't like so much analysis. <laughs> okay, so, so what else, uh, let's say, we have? Uh, for, okay, maybe, maybe I write, for example, the Hodge filtration satisfies this one. Maybe I, I will. Cup, I don't write complete. F G H M two is will be inside F I plus G H M one plus M T. This H means the cohomology. But the last piece that uh, we need is the polarization. So H two Derom. So we uh, we start from projective varieties. In, uh, in a fixed PN. This uh, PN is in, in some sense is fixed. So H theorem PN, this is uh, one dimensional. So uh, you just take the generator of this guy and then you restrict it uh, to X and you will get element uh, H2 theorem X. And let's call this one the polarization. So, so we have uh, uh, attached to a projective variety, we have uh, this, this structure. And I will write a proposition, and maybe, let, and actually this proposition will, will uh, clearly say the difference between mathematician and physicist. Proposition and actually this proposition is proposition two went two point four in my book. Okay, let's say take two points in your moduli space. As I said, these are uh, topologically they are the same, so the analytic structure changes. Or if you want, you take uh, uh, let's say families uh, of these x varieties. And, and if you want, uh, okay, if you even uh, you assume that they are defined uh, uh, over the field K. So, this cohomology ring, so this one, what we have constructed, we have constructed the Hodge filtration, we have constructed the cup product, we have constructed the polarization. This is structure, even so it is defined in algebraic fr framework, it doesn't distinguish the two, two varieties from each other. What it means, that at the end, this is isomor uh, isomorphic, in a minute I will explain, to the other structure. So, cohomology ring of x0, the Hodge filtration, the cup product here, 
and maybe the polarization I denoted by theta zero. So what it means, this means that there is a isomorphism, uh, isomorph K, iso isomorphism of K vector spaces from here to here, it respects the grading, this M, corresponding M goes to the corresponding M. It will respect the Hodge filtration, it will respect the cup product, and it will take the, 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 the polarization to the polarization. So the moral of the story is that even so we construct all this thing over arbitrary field, it, does, it is a kind of uh, topological data, okay? It doesn't distinguish uh, 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 X uh, from X0. Sometimes when we want to say that X is not biholomorphic to X0, we try to find some invariant of X, uh, which, is not, which is different from that invariant of the X0. So this, this means that this will not do the job for us. But, uh, and actually this is the math, the, the, uh, 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 I will need uh, this one to define the moduli space. Okay, uh, as I, maybe I say something about the, okay, not, not really the proof of the observation. I had written my book, which was more than 250 page books, but at the end, I realized that there was no rigorous proof for this fact. And, uh, and actually, after uh, many email contacts with Delin, he writes a rigorous proof, but uh, he refers to a lot of uh, SGA, Seminaire Geometrie Algebraique, and then uh, you know that there is SGA, FGA, there, there are a lot of subdivisions and so on. And really, myself, I have not looked at the proof because it goes through all these machineries of the, 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 the Grotendic and so on. But uh, I started to develop the theory assuming this one because at that time I was like a physicist. I mean, this is, this is trivial. I mean, I don't need to prove it. I have to de develop whatever I want to develop. So, but the proof is not, uh, in this generality, is not uh, uh, trivial. And of course, if you want to work over arbitrary field and so on, uh, so if you want, we can uh, try, but uh, uh, what I am saying, maybe uh, since I started to collaborate with physicists, I didn't care about some basic facts. <laughs> and then... Uh, so, sorry, though, may I interrupt? I mean, do you need M to be connected for this one? No, exactly. I mean, the, the best one, the, the M connected, yeah, exactly. Oh, but you prove, do you prove this in the differential way? You prove this in... Not no, actually, then, uh, in order to avoid the moduli space, you have to take families if you prove it, I mean, if you have a connection, uh -huh. the connection gives you a kind of uh, isomorphism. Right? Uh -huh. No, wait a minute, minute I will say. Yes. No, no, okay, just a minute. Uh, so, okay. The proof of our arbitrary field goes through K. But uh, let's say, K equal to say, we have, a, we have a very old theorem, uh, actually it has to do with arrangement, but at the end, H is star, X, Z, cup product here also, and also the polarization. The polarization also it is defined. It has it has in, in, uh, Z integers. This object is the same as X zero cup and theta zero of the X zero. This, mean, well, this is the, almost the same thing that the topologically the between between there in X, X and X0 are, uh, uh, are uh, C infinity isomorphic. But the point is that, uh, okay, this cup and theta, when you complexify it, it will be the same as this uh, cup and the theta here. But the Hodge filtration is missing here. And if you take the isomorphism here, it will not give the isomorphism in the level of Hodge filtration. So the, this piece of Hodge filtration, in this topology, I think you were, you were trying to say the, 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 this. Uh, and this has to do with the monodrome. You know, if you, you have a flat connection, you have the, the uh, uh, you take the flat sections and then you get the, this isomorphism. But, uh, but let me say in this way, and actually how you get this one, then you have just your moduli. Well, let's instead of moduli space, maybe I just take a parameter space, and then 
uh, forget these difficulties of constructing modular space. But anyway, if you have m, you have one point x, you have another point x0, you just connect by a pass, comma, and actually this h, h comma, depending on this pass, will be unique, and uh, this is the isomorphism uh, uh, you want. But from here, at actually my wrong argument is starting from here and a little bit try to, mess, to massage it and to get the isomorphism here uh, was not really working. So then, uh, and at the end of the day, you have to be careful that you are working over, uh, this is the isomorphism of k-vector spaces. And then, uh, anyway, this topological picture will not precisely will give you the statement here. Johannes, it's okay? Yeah, but I thought you had the connection also on the Durham cohomology, right? Yeah, yeah, I have the connection of the Durham cohomology also. And that's the same as the one when you look at, when you complexify and you look at the integers with the integers of the flat section. But right? these isomorphism the using the connection, how you want to get? You want to get as flat section, taking the flat section, no? For example, yeah. But uh, flat sections are not compatible with the, 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 the Hodgefeld track. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, you have the Griffiths transversality, so some other. I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised by this isomorphism because the Griffiths transversality says that you know. Okay, uh, what I what what I can say, varies, these things at the end, in the case of modular form, will produce for me SL two Z, whereas these things will produce an algebraic group of this form. Okay, my is uh, upper triangular. If you want, in a case of elliptic curve, I can say. So the type of the isomorphism is uh, different. This, since this, in the case of elliptic curve, this respect to hot filtration, this will give two by two upper triangular matrices, but uh, this guy will give me the whole SL to Z. Uh. Uh, anyway, if you want later, we, if you want, we can discuss and uh, to see if uh, you can give a, a proof. <laughs> What I'm saying is that the only rigorous proof that I have, uh, apparently it goes to, so also through this SGA and so on, and I have no time really to invest my... <laughs> well, I, I can do, but anyway. Uh, like a physicist, I set the goal, and sometimes I make a lot of ansatz that they must be trivial. <laughs> and then uh, after reaching the goal, and then make, maybe I will be back and uh, try to make everything rigorous. Okay, so maybe let's uh, actually maybe to have a, when I started. Huh? Four fifteen. Okay, so, okay. Later, no. Okay. Anyway, so the moduli space that uh, I want to say that it is uh, co uh, contains uh, 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 using this you can uh, produce a lot of modular form theory in mathematics, is the moduli, moduli of x. So x will itself will be very in uh, this m, but you enhance it with alpha, with a fixed, so fix x0. So you fix one point in your moduli space, maybe the, the best, uh, I mean, if you are a physicist, uh, there, sometimes you take a variety, you call it Lambda Ginsburg or whatever. Apparently, it is uh, the most, uh, you fix that one. And then uh, you, so T is the moduli of X together with isomorphism alpha. Alpha is from the cohomology ring of your variety to a fixed uh, cohomology ring, ring of uh, X0. And anyway, uh, uh, you can, well, maybe I have to say that uh, so you can also try to do mixed Hodge structures. You can start adding more structure. For example, if you want to get modular form for congruence group, you have to start adding a torsion structure. And, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, this enhancement is the basic one that I want to speak. But of course, you can put more data in order to get uh, uh, other classical objects. Okay. Uh, I am a little bit scared to put uh, this as conjecture, but even in the case of, uh, uh, let's say, Calabiao threefold that I worked out with Yao Murad, uh, 
still it's a conjecture because uh, uh, we treated moduli spaces like a physicist, not like a mathematician. But uh, T, maybe I put it must be a quasi affine variety. And what did, uh, well, at least, uh, at least, uh, maybe at least, or if you don't want to start for this, from this general, at least for Calabio threefold, for which we have a lot of computation which support this one. And uh, let me say uh, why. So, when it is something quasi affine, this means that you have some affine variety. Affine variety is given by what? It is given by, so maybe it start, uh, uh, let's, uh, okay. So it will be some polynomial ring, T1, T2, Tk. There must be some polynomial ring divided by some ideal. I mean, the zeros of this ideal are your affine variety in, uh, uh, in a T1, Tk space. And then uh, this means that T, must be some open. Basically, basically what this uh, from, uh, from this did, uh, in geometric term, that is zero locus of some idea uh, in T1, T2, Tk in Ck. Let, let's write down the so if you want, let's get, even let's say the, the, the complex language, so, because really I will not go to arithmetic application. So in C to the K, given by uh, okay, the zero locus of this ideal, maybe minus uh, some uh, some sub. Okay, maybe let's say it's better. Actually, this open is means there is key open. Anyway, classical moduli space in general in algebraic geometry they are not affine, but uh, but there is this uh, this uh, even this uh, intuition from algebraic geometry when you make enhancement of your object always the things the moduli spaces becomes better and better, and act in at least in this case when you add alpha then your moduli space suddenly will be up fine. This means that uh, uh, you can find this polynomial ring, this ideal, and so on. And, okay. Uh, so maybe from now on, in order not to make the confusion, let's put k equal to c, and then let's proceed with, uh, with uh, k equal to c. Okay. And uh, actually, this polynomial ring that will contains this algebra of modular forms, algebra of Ziegel modular form, Hilbert modular form, this, uh, this algebra of uh, topological string partition functions attached to a Calabio variety and so on. So this, is, uh, uh, so this will be interpreted at the end as, uh, as uh, modular forms. Okay, maybe I make the summary of... Uh, of uh, of, uh, let's say, uh, articles and results supporting this fact that this is, uh, aff this is uh, affine, or in many cases quasi-affine, and this algebra is really the algebra of, uh, of, uh, of modular or quasi-modular form. So let, let's say case of elliptic curve. In this case, uh, your variety is just uh, a complex story, and when you when you work uh, well, maybe for this one, uh, actually, 2005, I started to uh, uh, to do this one after uh, uh, works of Griffiths. Uh, Griffiths, but basically, the, uh, some ideas were in uh, uh, Nick Katz article, some ideas in uh, Kyoji Saito's article. Saito's perimeter form, but at the end, the, the moduli space is not there. But uh, then uh, maybe I, in, um, 
in 2012, I have uh, uh, lecture notes uh, describing how uh, one gets quasi-modular form theory from this one. Then this T is, is actually the uh, spec CT1, CT2, CT3, this guy. T3 to the 2 minus T2 to the 3. So, so uh, I mean, uh, this is the this is the full uh, ring generated by three elements. So you see that this is of dimension three. So classical moduli space of elliptic curve is of dimension one. So this enhancement will give two more freedom uh, uh, for your object. And well, this gain. Uh, I have written uh, lecture notes of almost 100 pages explaining that this will give the, the theory of Qua uh, Kaneko Zagier theory of quasi modular forms. And uh, again, uh, this T1 will be interpreted as, uh, uh, as the Eisenstein series E2, T2 as Eisenstein series E4, and so on. So I don't want to go really into detail, but uh, you, there is some machinery to, to develop this, uh, this geometric language into classic, to, uh, to quasi-modular form theory of kaneko zagin and, and maybe... Uh, uh, if, if uh, returning back to this comments of uh, uh, Johannes, if you, in the case of elliptic curve, you look this isomorphism, this one will be give you, the, the, all this isomorphism will give you SL2Z, whereas this isomorphism will give you triangular uh, matrices. So, the, at least in the case of elliptic curves, it shows that they are uh, 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 too distinct, isomorphism. Okay. Sorry, th this, this isomorphism says that some of the, the Hodge numbers are the same. Exactly. So but the point mean, is that I mean, Hodge numbers say, usually are defined transcendentally, but by some uh, miracle, they are topological invariant. I mean, it, it tells you basically the dimensions of these quotients. Yeah, the exactly. Yeah, but the dimensions are the same. It, it, it is not enough to make this uh, I, uh, make argument. Just the numbers are... That's what you have to prove, right? I mean, that's... Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Um, I mean, it's a, a, a general theory going on. Maybe just I write... Uh, uh, summary of a result. Um, maybe uh, let's say um, certain lattice polarized K3 surfaces and or open Calabio uh, varieties. This is uh, uh, Alim and uh, many of his, a uh, few of his uh, students, uh, they, they compute this model space, they get uh, some algebras, and then they interpret, uh, they find the, so this is algebraic, they transcendental uh, interpretation of all these TIs as transcendental objects like modular forms and so on. And as I said at the beginning, so I will just mention the, the summary of. Uh, of uh, which person where has uh, done some works. And uh, Calabial trifold, again, uh, Alim, Murat, me, Yao, uh, Emmanuel Scheidegger. So maybe uh, at least, okay, okay. So for Calabial trifold, uh, um, again, I don't, I don't want to go to in mo too much into detail, but, uh, but let me say uh, this, uh, there is a, this, this, let me just explain the case of uh, this topological string partition function. So we can find object, the, let's, uh, let's call topology algebraic, 
topological string partition function. So, uh, and it is possible to make the precise translation of this one into the same object computed in physics uh, 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 so, what I am saying, a lot of uh, nice functions which comes from mathematical physics, they can be interpreted as functions, so this, let me say, this will be inter inter interpreted as a global function in this T-moduli space. So, you have to fix the topological type of Calabria variety, and then uh, you take, you consider your moduli space, classical moduli space, you construct this bigger moduli space, and then uh, you can uh, interpret these things. Maybe uh, in the case of, uh, in order to, to uh, so the general theory uh, of Calabria trifold, it is written in this article, but let's say in the case of, there is a very special, uh, famous Calabria trifold called mirror quintic. Calabiao trifold. So, for example, this moduli space of this mirror quintic Calabiao trifold is of dimension one. But once you com uh, you start computing this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this moduli space for uh, for uh, for this mirror quintic, this will be suddenly seven dimensional. Then you start computing coordinates t one, t six. And uh, as usual, there will be some discriminant. That doesn't matter what it is, but anyway, let me write. So you will be of dimension seven. And, and then, uh, for example, uh, uh, let, me, let me try to write, uh, for example, fg. Uh, fg, at the end is fg algebraic will be of this format. It would be Q, G, T, zero. So this is T. Let's call this one T. T, four minus T, zero to the five. Let me just write it down a structure theorem, just, and then T, five, three, G, minus three. And you will see that uh, this, uh, this topological string partition function becomes a kind of rational function, and actually you know uh, QG homogeneous of degree uh, what it is uh, 69 G minus 1 and then you have to give some weight for your TI's degree of TI is 3I plus 1 and this is I equal to 0, 1 until four, and maybe just a degree T5. The weight of T5 is 11, the weight of T6 is eight. Anyway, what it will be clear, you will see that uh, uh, Fg is a homogeneous polynomial of certain degree divided by this one. So in order to, to discover, to compute Fg, you need really uh, uh, find that number of coefficients in QG to compute. For example, if you ask uh, uh, experts in modular form why modular forms are uh, useful, but may, most of the time you need just, uh, in order to compute a modular form, you need to compute a finite number of coefficients because this finite generatedness of modular forms and so on. If you have not seen this one, two, three uh, of modular forms of Zagier, is there are a lot of examples of this kind. And uh, at the end, uh, this is a kind of the theory of Calabio modular form attached to mirror quintic. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have uh, these miraculous applications of modular forms in this context, just these <laughs> this, this things which come from physics. And, okay, maybe uh, let's say, uh, well, uh, there are other, uh, there are other, works also, maybe I don't mention it because uh, I'm not writing explicit, uh, explicit uh, data. But for this, just for this one, after my work with uh, Murad Yao and Scheidegger, I wrote, there is a book for this one called Gauss-Manning Connection in the Styles Calabiao Modular Forms. 
Anyway, and there are many a few other, other ones. And OK, this is a theory is going on. So the idea is that you can combine you, uh, uh, classical object of mathematics with objects coming from physics. And actually, in the case of uh, object coming from physics, you can say that what is the corresponding modular form theory? What is the corresponding algebra of functions uh, that your object uh, live there? And in some sense, this is structure in the physics literature, it is hidden in uh, Yamaguchi Yao article, which at the end, uh, without this language, they observe that this FG has polynomial structures. Of course, they make this define other variables such that uh, the things become uh, uh, polynomial. But anyway, uh, I have written more, uh, more, uh, more examples. The point is that, uh, well, uh, when you want to sell your product in mathematics, you have to prove theorems. <laughs> and you cannot just say that, OK, these are nice theories going on. And uh, I want to just uh, 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 a little bit uh, change, uh, change the, the, the topic. But before, before changing, let me say, uh, so uh, at least in this case, algebraic object, something very important also. Most of the time, for some object, for example, like FG, you have three different incarnations. For example, now I am thinking, I am uh, talking about this algebraic one. There is a, a holomorphic, holomorphic. So there are precise dictionaries translating algebraic to holomorphic ob object, and uh, and also ho holomorphic plus anti. Holomorphic. Even in the case of modular forms, you have some uh, many most of the time some C infinity uh, modular forms, and uh, there is some uh, correspondence between this C infinity and holomorphic one. Indeed, this topological string partition function, starting from uh, Bersatsi, uh, Sekoti, Oguri, Wafa, you will see that this FG has two different incarnations: holomorphic and something which is mixture of holomorphic and then holomorphic. And there is a dictionary between this one and this one. And what I am saying that this the third object algebraic also, object also there is some precise dictionary have to pass from one to another. Chromophytin invariants are hidden here. I'm not really familiar with this, these things in the physics because apparently in Perchati, uh, Sekoti, Ogri, Wafa, they first compute this one and then they get this one and then they get the Gromophytin invariant. But anyway, uh, what I am saying that these arrows are precise dictionaries have to pass from to another. Okay. Okay, this is some theory going on, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, okay, I think uh, more 20 minutes, no, I don't know. Uh, at least 20 minutes, no. Maybe it's, uh, well, two blackboards also. This one. The good things that I have been in, the, in Germany before, that I know this system. <laughs> Otherwise, when I was in Max Planck, the foreigners come and they make a mess. <laughs> Okay, um, so the, 
Since really this is a kind of uh, general language which will be developed until it reaches some, uh, some nice applications, maybe either in uh, physics or in mathematics, I started to a little bit uh, uh, relate these things into something else. Uh, uh, and what I want to to say uh, next that uh, in this moduli space, uh, the concept of Hodge loci, okay, there is this concept, yeah, concept of Hodge loci in, uh, in, uh, in algebraic geometry, and the best place to see this object is this bigger space, not classical, mo mo uh, uh, not classical moduli space. And I will try to explain this one, this Hodge loci one, in just one example. But this is just for any, any, any variety. And, okay, anyway, uh, uh, the modular form part, uh, uh, I will not talk more. So, um, so, the rest of the talk I want to say that these moduli spaces are good to study something called Hodge loci, and at the end, let's say, uh, uh, maybe the Hodge conjecture uh, itself. So, uh, so, in the case of product of elliptic curve, so let's say Calabio one fold times Calabio one fold. So uh, and okay, so let's say my x will be one elliptic curve product with. So the theory is in general, but I took this example just to, as a kind of uh, 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 preliminary to understand the whole general picture. And in this, uh, uh, well, uh, in this case, this moduli space, uh, so there will be moduli space of coming from P e, e1, e2, then this will be P1 minus infinity times uh, P1 minus infinity, and that then this infinity has to do with the degeneration of elliptic curve. Maybe for, uh, just not to make my notation long, just let's compactify it, let's call it P1 over P1. So, what is the uh, Hodge loci? Hodge loci. In this specific context, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is very simple, let, let me write. E G1, so, so this means that uh, if I take G1, so let's say, so this, uh, this, each point here, there is a J invariant of elliptic curve, so let's say G1, J1, J2, here. Uh, so, this will be J1, J2, in, uh, in my moduli space, I say P1 and P1, such that AJ1 is isogenous to EAJ2. This means that there will be uh, isogenous <coughs> of degree, degree, degree N. This means that there is a, I mean, this is the best possible uh, this is that there is an end to one map, holomorphic, algebraic, respecting the group structure, and uh, all the beautiful uh, uh, things that you might imagine uh, from EG1 to EG2. This is holomorph, this is some algebraic structure between EG1 and EG2. If you take G1 and G2 generic, there will be, there will be no uh, such map. But at the end, uh, maybe I, I write other versions, other. Uh, uh, versions of this. Uh, okay, okay. The, the, the other version, the E G1 times has a non trivial okay, curve. Okay. So when you take the product of two elliptic curves, there are two trivial curves. You take the coordinate constant. So E G1 times point will be a curve point times eg2 will be a curve. So uh, uh, 
Uh, so the condition is that there will be some, uh, some curve inside which projects to each coordinates non-trivially, non-constantly. And if you want, I want to write a version which has to do with the Hodge loci, and actually it will be uh, this one. So it will be... Okay, so... The non-trivial. Sure. And if I want to write... Uh, 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 so, e, uh, uh, this is a Calabria one-fold, it has a one-zero form, you take the product, so you take the, this uh, Kunis product of this one, one zero form here with one zero form here, and the integration of this for over some cycle, over some cycle in H2, E1, Ej1, Ej2, Z. So the statement is that uh, okay, uh, you you choose this omega zero, uh, Ej1 and omega one zero in EG2, to make the tensor product. So some integration of this guy over some cycle in the product must be zero. And actually the translation from here to here is that you take the topological, topological class of this curve inside, uh, inside uh, your, uh, your product. And, and well, if, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, just in this way, uh, so, and actually, this is the, the concept of, uh, let's say, this, uh, this uh, Hodge loci is that a uh, certain piece of the Hodge filtration of this guy over some cycle must be zero. But maybe I write some well known fact. Uh, this is the union. So, so, you see that at least in the first version, there is an uh, n going on. This union uh, union R will be over n. In the other versions, you don't see this n explicitly. Union of enumerable set of highly singular curves inside inside. P1 times P1. Uh, this, uh, this enumerable, you will see it if you, for each n, actually, there will be one irreducible curve. And actually, let me, let me write, let me write. Uh, the things are not so much uh, um, mysterious. Enumerable, let's say, call this Y0n. Or maybe here. So, an enumerable set of highly singular curves. Curves, let's uh, a curve, I call it. And, and actually, this, these curves are algebraic curves. They are called, uh, uh, well, singular models of, of, of uh, modular curves. So, y, 0, n. This is by rational. So after uh, resolution of singularities, this will be gamma not n quotiented by h. h will be the upper half plane imaginary tau bigger than zero. And gamma not n will be uh, all a, b, this modular group, l, a, b, c, d. A, B, A, B, this is in SL2Z, the subgroup of SL2Z such that this C is congruent to zero mod N. Anyway, this, in this, 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 this very simple example, the concept of the Hodge loci is the union of uh, singular models of modular curves in P1 times P1. And, um, and if you look at the literature, there are very, uh, uh, in number theory, they are very well studied. For example, uh, Fermat-Loss theorem has uh, been uh, 
uh, the consequence of this fact that these guys are defined over Q, and every elliptic curve modular, this means that every elliptic curve must appear in the Jacobian of this guy, and so on. So there are a lot of history going on here. But let me try to say, uh, uh, maybe just uh, more uh, 10 minutes? Okay, I think good. Huh? Or? Okay, so maybe. So, if you start doing this bigger moduli space, in this case, okay, you have two elliptic curves. I, saw, I said that the, the case of elliptic curve, this moduli is dimension three. If you take two, the dimension will be six. But for some geometric reason that I am not interested in uh, to do modular form theory, I, I am interested to study these uh, curves. You will have some results like this, and then I will, I will finish uh, the, the talk in this case. So, in this case, so this is different from a, a, a kind of a modification of the moduli space that I wrote, but anyway, you define moduli of, so E1, two elliptic curves, pairs of elliptic curves, and then uh, alpha, so in your moduli space, now E1 and E2 can move also. And alpha, what it is? Alpha is as before. Alpha is the isomorphism between, uh, well, and in the case of elliptic curve, everything can be simplified into H1. But let me the structure, and then H star theorem. E2. So in the previous version, I fixed one variety and I took a moduli space of one variety together with alpha. In this version, I take uh, two elliptic curves and then my, uh, uh, the moduli of two elliptic curves and I make the enhancement together with alpha between these, their cohomology ring. So maybe I just write down uh, the, a kind of uh, uh, theorem. Well, it is published just this year. Uh, um, and so let's just uh, try to explain. Uh, the, the, so uh, this, this moduli spaces are fine. Maybe right over again, x2, x3. It is of dimension four. One can write down explicitly uh, uh, coordinates over this moduli space, so I have to take this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, what was it? Uh, discriminant twenty seven x three to the two minus x two to the three, and the same for twenty seven y y three to the two minus y. So it is this affine variety uh, uh, C four basically C four minus delta 1 equal to 0, union with delta 2 equal to 0. And these are, this is delta 1 is this one, delta 2 is this one. And <clears throat> so the vector field, so this is, uh, let's say, the first part, 2. Uh, so. I didn't mention, uh, I didn't really define the concept of Hodge loci here, but you will see in the second part that uh, the, uh, the only solution, the only algebraic, maybe I write algebraic solutions out. So there is an explicit vector field. And this explicit vector field, maybe I write it. This is because this is 2x3. OK, maybe I might write it. This is, this is published in uh, Moscow Mathematical Journal. But maybe just I write a few. It is explicit degree 3. 6x2. Actually, no. 2, 3 minus 1, 6. x2 minus y2 x2. Okay, I will not write, but anyway, 
there is an explicit vector field in this moduli space. So there will be ba ba ba, ddx3, explicit again, ba ba ba, y2, ba ba ba, y3. And only algebraic sol the only algebraic solutions of uh, V are SC0N. So this guy has innumerable set of algebraic solutions, and actually these guys are biholomorphic to, uh, to this modular curve that I wrote somewhere there. This, uh, I don't have really time to define these things as Hodge loci in this bigger moduli space, but anyway. So the moral of, uh, uh, usually you, when you, well, how many of you have done a course in uh, ordinary differential equations? I don't know. <laughs> so when you do a course in ordinary differential equations, usually, for example, an ordinary differential equation, there are vector fields, no? And uh, then uh, you start saying that, okay, there's a vector field, but there are solutions. But the solutions are vector fields are usually transcendental curves, not algebraic curves. For example, when you look uh, y2 x equal to x0, this is algebraic curve, this is a cusp, the, the picture is like this. Or if you make the formation, the picture will be like uh, uh, this. These are algebraic curves. But if you look for the solutions of uh, vector fields, uh, still you have local holomorphic objects, curves, but they are not necessarily algebraic. And the, 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 the theorem says that uh, the only, it has enumerable set of algebraic uh, curves which are solutions of this vector field, and actually these are all uh, modular curves that, uh, the, that I have. In the previous version, in the previous version that in P1 and times P1, this is just the jungle of curves that they, you don't see any structure. But what I'm saying is that in this bigger moduli space, uh, which is of dimension four, they are characterized just by, uh, just by uh, uh, one vector field. That's this ve vector field uh, defines them uniquely. At some point, if I have time, I will try to give some more arithmetic uh, applications to this one, but this is something that it is not uh, well known for to number theorists. And maybe just uh, two minutes and then I will finish. Maybe this is just by hand. And, and actually, uh, if, uh, if you want to, 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 if you know uh, uh, what are wise Eisenstein series is, for example, E2, E4, E6, the classical Eisenstein series is they are holomorphic function from upper half plane to C. Uh, they have uh, explicit formulas. And uh, actually, you can characterize these uh, curves also using Eisenstein series. Maybe uh, I, uh, I say S0n will be the image of, of uh, this kind of map. And then I finish. So my moduli space C4 minus discriminant. And then, uh, then you construct your map uh, basically by Eisenstein series. Up to some constant, again up to some constant, this is tau going to something like this. Uh, E2, oh sorry, E4, tau, it is uh, E2, again, uh, there are some constants that I am, not, I am not caring, but really I have to care, otherwise this minus n e2, e2 uh, to the n tau. Again, I will just write one coordinate. But anyway, what I, what I want to say here is to the uh, two. You can construct a transcendentality, these curves, uh, using Eisenstein series and using this combination of uh, 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 this E2 Eisenstein series and so on. But the, 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 the point is that uh, even so, this is, will be the kind of holomorphic 
uh, description of these curves, but these curves are defined over Q. This means that you can uh, make, uh, make mod P, and, and this, this relation with the uh, Fermat last theorem actually starts from this uh, fact that this, this, this curve, this modular curve, is defined over Q. It has uh, some nice model uh, over Z you can make, uh, and, and so on. Anyway, uh, I wrote this one. Uh, because, as I said, for this big, uh, big theory going on, uh, uh, I, am, I cannot claim that I can surprise somebody, but this is just some theory going on. But uh, at least when you look for this kind of geometric applications, uh, uh, something, uh, a single vector field, polynomial vector field of, uh, of, uh, of degree uh, 2, becomes responsible for all modular uh, curves embedded in, uh, in uh, the, uh, dimension 4. And uh, at least at some point in the future, I hope that I find more uh, applications of this particular example in the case of, uh, in the case of uh, let's say, uh, let's say mo modularity theorem. And uh, by the way, uh, I can do this John, for any Hodge loci. And maybe uh, again, uh, to, uh, in the case of general Hodge loci, uh, there are consequences of uh, Hodge conjecture saying that Hodge loci must be algebraic, defined over certain field, and so on. These consequences of the Hodge conjecture are as difficult as the Hodge conjecture itself. And at the end, I hope that uh, this, this, uh, this study might help uh, also in this direction. But I think the, uh, this example clearly uh, shows me why I want to study Hodge loci in, uh, in this bigger moduli space. I think I finish. Thank you very much. Um, this is an inspiring talk, so um, we have time for questions. In Zoom or here? <laughs> uh, I have a question. I mean, the, the last one. So, the n is an integration constant for this, or what is? How does n appear? You have this vector field, and so the vector field is independent of n. What I am saying, maybe just imagine the, this vector field. Uh, let's say the R two ODE version of the vector fields. When you take a course in ODE, you will say that you say that there are solutions and so on. Okay. But uh, sometimes uh, algebraic objects, algebraic curves also might be the solutions of vector, of uh, some ODs, okay? What I am claiming here, that the only algebraic solutions of uh, this, this, this ODE, you can look any vector field as uh, ordinary differential equation, are just this, uh, 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 are, are algebraic curves which are isomorphic to the modular curve. For all n, all n together, you will get, uh, again, a zoo of curves, zoo of algebraic curves, and these algebraic curves, uh, apart from these algebraic curves, any other solutions of this, this vector field is a transcendental curve, not algebraic. But how does the n appear? I mean, is n somehow... Uh, so you have a family of solutions, and then it's polynomial when n is integer? Is that okay, maybe again, happening? I explain the picture uh, uh, here. Maybe... I. I mean, n must be an integration constant for this differential equation. Right? Exactly. When you have ODE, you get initial condition, no? Okay? And uh, sometimes, for example, you take initial condition, and then you get the solution, and then initial condition here, then you get another, another solution, okay? These, these n's are a discrete set of, let's kind of, in initial conditions before your differential equation. So, generic initial condition will give you a transcendent curve, just some enumerable set of initial conditions will give you uh, uh, algebraic curves. And uh, okay, w what happened to the x1 in this? You had t1 up there. Why? Where did x1 go? What is? Oh, oh, okay. So, so, so as I said, if you start uh, with, from the same moduli space that you. You, I, I told at the beginning, in the case of elliptic curve, this is classical elliptic curve three, the, this moduli space of dimension three. So you take two moduli, uh, uh, you take two uh, 
two elliptic curves. So it will be two copies of uh, enhanced elliptic curve. So you will get some six-dimensional, okay? But uh, the, the concept of Hodge loci in that con on that content that I get, they are, uh, they are uh, two-dimensional sub-varieties in six-dimensional objects. And uh, after that, I realized that there is some alg algebraic action of algebraic group going on. I, I took the quotients of the six-dimensional space with some two-dimensional algebraic variety. I got four-dimensional object, and everything from six dimension descended to this four dimension. And, uh, but uh, this, uh, this Eisenstein series uh, E2, uh, well, if you, this algebraic corner X1 and Y1, they have disappeared, but if you write down the parameterization of this algebraic curve, Curve, you will see that at the end, Eisenstein series is E2 will appear, which correspond to X1 in some sense, and the Y1 will appear in the denominator in this, in this, in this format. And but uh, yeah, but originally I wrote everything first in this six-dimensional space. For example, uh, at some point I would be, one of the things that I tried a lot and I uh, failed, this, uh, this, this, this things of isogeny and so on has to do with the Hecke operators acting on the algebra of modular forms. At some point I tried to do the same thing in the case of mirror quintic to see if uh, there are, uh, for example, take a mirror quintic times mirror quintic or Calabia threefold times Calabia threefold. Is there any interesting algebraic cycle in this case? In the case of elliptic curves, I know there is, sometimes there is, and it is called the, iso uh, the, the, the graph of the isogeny. But in the case of Calabia trifolds, uh, I mean, this question related to algebraic cycles is complicated. I, ca I cannot immediately reproduce the same things in, the, in this case because I don't have a concept of isogeny and, uh, and uh, well. You have all these, I don't know, equivalences, some kind of correspondences. Correspondences and so on. And in this case, it will be, it will be also conjectural because they have to do with, I, most of the time, I, you work with Hodge cycle, Hodge cycle. And then at the end, uh, if there is something algebraic, there must be, I have to assume that the Hodge conjecture is true and so on. So uh, uh, I would love to do something similar in the, in the case of uh, Mirror Quintic, but. Uh, the things are not as easy as expected. Other questions? Where do you draw the line between, you said modular forms and automorphic forms? Can you uh -huh. say in this perspective, where is the line between the two? I think the difference... Uh, Well, when you try to generalize modular forms, uh, well, uh, the, 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 well, I mean, uh, what is the, the, the classical uh, generalization? You take Hermitian symmetric domains, and then uh, then automorphic factor, and the, the, uh, and the, the, uh, you forget the name modular, and then the names become automorphic form, no? And uh, actually, I wrote an article with. Uh, Do you think those? The for the Calabia, this is like modular forms, or are these already automorphic forms? No, this is the point. There is the, the, none of them. I mean, there is no Hermitian symmetric domain in this case. Uh, this is the point. I mean, why I am saying that uh, these theories are parallel to classical mathematical theories. For example, for a long time, Zagier uh, tried to relate this Yukawa coupling, this topological string partition function to classical modular forms. And as far as I know, he failed. I mean, there is no relation. So what I'm claiming is that there are some parallel theories going on. Not necessarily you can write a Yukawa coupling of mirror quintics in terms of a classical modular form. So you have to develop the corresponding modular form theory. And uh, I give a geometric language. Uh, maybe, I mean, um, classical people in modular forms will not like it because it's too much Hodge theory language. Uh, and the worse than that is that I don't give you Hermitian symmetric domain. And uh, the people in uh, Langland's program will uh, like to have Hermitian symmetric domain or some uh, Lie group quotiented with uh, some maximal compact group to start automorphic form theory from this point of view. 
but this digitalization uh, does, uh, doesn't start from there. It starts from, uh, uh, let's say, kind of uh, this, uh, this modular space T. And, uh, yeah. Okay, if there are no other questions. Well, I don't see any um, from Zoom. Can, could you hear us from the Zoom? Maybe we get some feedback at least on the... How was the experience? This is the first time you are transmitting? Not, not quite, but... <laughs> currently nobody is hearing us even. Are they even there? Maybe. Can they hear me? I don't see any sense. <laughs> okay, well, let's just thank Mohsen again for his very nice... Okay, work. thank you. <laughs>